Hey guys, I'm Reed. That's Swale with an accent over the E, and this is Samsung Business Television. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming to the studio today. Suwale so Nunez is hanging out with us talking about how to build DEX optimized apps. But before we talk about that, let's talk about DEX. What is DEX? So DEX actually allows you to convert your smartphone into a full desktop experience, okay. which includes your monitor, your keyboard, and the mouse. You dock your device onto the DEX station, and it enhances the Android experience. So now you can run your applications on a larger screen and utilize your desktop peripherals. All right, that sounds pretty amazing. What are some of the advantages to implementing a DEX solution? So DEX is actually a powerhouse of productivity. Okay. Some things are just easier on desktop. For example, sending emails or copying, pasting between applications, mm -hmm. which is great for multitasking. Absolutely. So for example, if I'm copying information from an Excel file and I wanted to paste it into a PowerPoint, I can do that with a simple click of a mouse or a few keystrokes. Aha, uh -huh. control V, control C. There you go. The extent of my computer knowledge. All right, so how does DEX optimize apps? So Samsung DeX takes advantage of Android's end new multi-window feature, mm -hmm. which allows you to run multiple applications across the screen, and it also allows you to manipulate the, the application window. Okay. Um, it also extends the features specific to mobile application development, which is not typical for, your, for mobile applications on smartphones. Beyond that, it creates an environment that's conducive for advanced photo editing, word processing, games, and more. And even if your application is not built or DEX enabled, it'll you can still take advantage of the larger screen. What on my device is pre-DEX enabled? So Samsung did a really good job of DEX enabling a lot of the applications that come preloaded on our flagship devices, including the S8 and the S8 Plus. Okay. And we're, act we're actually working with our partners now to DEX enable a lot of their applications as well. So Citrix, VMware, Amazon? They're all compatible with DEX. All right, that's, that's pretty awesome. Is there anything else? Yes. DEX opens up a lot of possibilities. Before, developers were confined to the single column, small screen size when designing their applications, and which was a pain point for a lot of developers and designers. But now with the larger screen, they can take advantage and be as creative as they possibly can and design freely. On top of that, Samsung DEX opens up a new channel to market applications. And that's something big for developers to get their applications out there. Does DEX have any Samsung-specific APIs that might be deleterious to the development of Android apps? Funny you brought that up. Actually, it doesn't. Samsung DeX doesn't have any dependencies on Samsung-specific APIs. So you can follow your, your typical Android guidelines for enabling multi-window support, handling runtime configurations, or implementing responsive UI. So how does a developer DeX enable an app? So any Android developer should be familiar with the Android manifest file. It contains information specific to the application, like package name, or it actually describes components that the Android system will use to run the application sure. itself. I actually have a sample application here. We can walk through the manifest file. Come on. Let's do it. So the single most important step to DEX enabling your application is enabling multi-window support and setting the activity as resizable. So moving from a touchscreen to a non-touchscreen device, is there anything I should consider as a, as a developer? No one in common practice, it's always good to not explicitly declare touchscreen support within your application. So if you did that, you would eliminate all peripheral use and the, and the app wouldn't even launch in DEX. And on top of that, it'll eliminate support of sight impaired individuals trying to use your application. Through D-pad. That's right, D-pad. I'm sold, I want to develop my own app. What are some best practices? Walk me through it. A good best practice is actually to design your application to support multiple screens. So implementing responsive UI and adaptive UI so your application detects when there's a different device or screen size or screen chain and adjust accordingly. A good way to do that is to, rather than hard coding pixel dimensions, use more of a percentage approach when setting up your UI elements. Okay. And what that does is it maintains uniformity across the screen as the application window adjusts. So how about that keyboard and mouse? How do I get it to work with my apps? So keyboard and mouse support is inherent to Android. As long as the system detects it, they'll work normally. You can actually programmatically add custom keyboard shortcuts, mm -hmm. but then we'd have to go into conversations around uh, custom callback methods, and that's completely that's like a whole different other, video. whole other video. We're not going to do that for this video. So what's next? So now that we've made the code modifications, it's good practice to clean and rebuild your project before deploying it to the device. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay. So I'm actually cleaning the project. I'm now building that project. Now we can deploy the application by clicking Run. 
But this is just for this is just for testing purposes, correct? It is. Um, if we're actually deploying this for production, you'd have to sign it with your developer keys mm -hmm. and deploy it how you deploy it currently in your enterprise. Whether that could be through an MDM, deploy to those devices, or you use a public app store. So let's see it on the smartphone. Here it is. It's a simple memo pad application, similar to any text edit software. You just tap it, the keyboard comes up. Okay. The app was actually built by one of our DEX developer evangelists, Victor Alkanet. All right, great, let's see it on DEX. Sure, let's dock it. Like any desktop, there's a taskbar of running applications. Here's our application there. Just click on this, and then this is your memo, and I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> on top of that, if you notice, the application looks a little different on the desktop mode. Mm -hmm and it automatically detects that it is in desktop mode and there's an additional column within the application. To your desktop, see what it did there? <laughs> see that? This entire time we've been talking about screen res resizing. Now mm -hmm. it's time to demonstrate. All right, so I just go up there just like a normal computer. Exactly. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> awesome, it's really simple. <laughs> you wanna do some dragging? Oh, it's just, yeah, look at that. So is there anything else? Is that it? One more thing. We want our developers to go out and dex enable their applications and use developer.samsung.com as a resource. There you have it. Thank you so much for coming to the studio. Swale with an accent over the A. Nunez talking to us about how to build dex optimized apps. I hope you guys learned something I know I did. Check us out next time. And as always, we will see you on the internet. Well, we got uh, Johnny Jackhammer out there. Give him a minute. That was like a joke my grandfather would have made. Yeah, Johnny Jackhammer. <laughs> Being macho macho out there. I don't know where that came from. Your face is just... <laughs> it's my face. Don't, uh, no blue steel, man. No you, blue you've steel. Seen <laughs> you just turn it, just turn it back and sign out the For more information on DEX, go to samsung.com forward slash DEX for work.